All right, good evening and welcome to the May 2nd Board of Education meeting. If everyone will please rise for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we will begin this evening with the report of the superintendent, Dr. Byrne. Thank you very much. Good evening and thank you for joining us for our May 2nd Board of Education meeting. Tonight is the annual budget hearing for the 2023-2024 school district budget. So I will try to keep my report brief. As you know, we have a lot of ground to cover. Before I, I start, I really have to comment on the most extraordinary sporting event I ever attended in my career yesterday afternoon. It was the high school's first unified basketball game versus Marinec. The, the students, the community all came out. The, the gym was, was filled with people cheering, cheering our athletes by name. Um, it was just an incredible moment when one of our students who was struggling when she first came on the court made a basket after a few attempts and the whole place just erupted. It was like Madison Square Garden uh, <laughs> last week with the Knicks. Um, it, was just, I, I, it was just an incredible afternoon um, and it, it has to be one of the best highlights of my time as a superintendent. I could not be more proud. If I may, um, I was fortunate enough to be there and I took my uh, eighth grade son with me and I, I think you are um, underselling how amazing <laughs> an experience it was and I was talking to uh, people at the dog park or as they say it's the park that allows dogs <laughs> this morning and uh, there was a father there who was talking about, oh, I was at the baseball game. It was, it was one of the greatest baseball games in, in the high school. And I said, you know what? You need to come to the unified basketball game on Thursday. I said, if you want to talk about the best athletic experience you will ever have, it's to come. And it, it, I, I cannot share enough of how amazing it was. And I really have such high hopes that, that we will have even more fans for yeah. these kids. Because it didn't matter what team the kids were playing for, yep. everybody in, that, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the gymnasium was cheering for them. And they were amazing athletes. Yeah. So the next game is Thursday, May 4th at 4.15 at the high school versus Horace Greeley, Chappaqua. It's the team's last home game of the season, so I hope we can really fill the place uh, Thursday afternoon. We are coming into the busy season of school life, and a number of events have taken place since our last meeting. First, we had our annual Board of Education and Joint um, City Council meeting on April 22nd. We had a good discussion with the council and then got to walk together in the Little League and Softball Parade, which is always a, a fun event. Um, last Thursday, many of us enjoyed the Rye High School Arts Awards, which as Principal Suzanne Short pointed out, marks the beginning of senior season, the time when we celebrate seniors and their um, accomplishments in the period leading up to graduation. The annual Midland Fair took place on Saturday with a jungle theme. Unfortunately, the parade prior to the fair uh, was a monsoon theme and had to be canceled <laughs> due to the rain. But the activities were moved indoors. Uh, the first since I've been here, we've had great weather in, in the past six years, but the fair was a huge success nonetheless. I, I, I heard uh, Jim said he was sweating when you stopped by, Gabby, because of the mass of people in the building. Thankfully, you didn't have the fire inspector with you. <laughs> um, speaking of the budget, the 2023-2024 school district budget roadshow continues. Since our last meeting, I have spoken at the Rye Middle School, Midland, and Osborne Parent Organization meetings. I've been to visit with the Rye Rec Seniors Group. And at Rye Rec, I was joined by seventh graders Graham Durkin and Calvin Rolano who played two saxophone duos. They received perfect scores at NISMA this year and really awed the seniors. They were yelling encore, as Jane can attest, <laughs> and she was there with me. Uh, they could have played all afternoon and not heard a word from me, and the seniors would have been happy. But it was great to be back with, with the seniors in the community again. And the, the boys were a tough act to follow, but um, I, I'm glad to be upstaged by kids any day of the week. 
I'll be speaking to the Rye Chamber of Commerce tomorrow morning and the Rye Lions Club on Thursday, followed by the Milton School PTO and Rye Rotary on Friday. I'm looking forward to seeing many community members and hopefully answering all of their questions about the budget and the school district. Um, the Focus on Excellent budget newsletter is at the printer and will soon be winging its way toward mailboxes across Rye. Each year we produce this newsletter with information about the budget vote and the uh, Board of Edu Education trustee election and mail it to every postal address in 10580. It will also be posted to the district website on Friday. Yesterday was School Principals Appreciation Day and today is National Teacher Appreciation Day. I know the parent organizations do a great deal to celebrate and recognize our principals and teachers and that many parents have reached out directly to say thank you. In fact, I had a few principals share emails they received last night that were so meaningful to them and they were just blown away by them. So I, I hope they are all feeling appreciated because we are very fortunate to have such wonderful teachers staff, administrators, principals, it's very lucky to be here for us. And I wanna add my thanks and, and the board's thanks to the chorus of voices. And finally, news that um, you all have been waiting for, I believe. Um, I can now officially say that we will give back the last snow emergency day built into the calendar. I, I was a little <laughs> nervous over the weekend. <laughs> Um, as our facilities folks can attest, I was texting and calling Rob, Luigi, and Patrick all weekend, getting photos of the brook. Uh, at one point, uh, Caitlin, you might, Patrick may have warned you already. He said, I think you need to talk to Caitlin about getting access to the camera on your own. So, which in other words means leave me alone when it's raining out. <laughs> but this day, uh, Friday, May 26th, uh, the Friday of Memorial Day weekend, uh, will be a day off from school, a snow day give back. Schools and offices will be closed that day and we'll send out a separate standalone communication notifying the community and calendars will reflect the day as of tomorrow. And that concludes my report for this evening. Okay, thank you, <laughs> Dr. Burnt. I'm gonna have to talk about that <laughs> camera access. I don't know if that's a good idea. All right, moving on to the budget hearing. <laughs> Dr. Byrne. So um, over the last couple of months, we've had lots of discussions here at the board table. And as I was just sharing out in the community, um, just a, a very quick recap for me and then Gabby will take it over. Uh, our, our budget process begins, you know, our budget process for the following year begins right after the budget vote for the year. So we are working all summer, we're working all year and really looking at how we can present a budget to the community that is fiscally responsible, uh, lives within the tax cap, and continues to improve our programs and our services that we offer our community and our family. So um, I'm really pleased with where we ended up um, with our budget this year. Um, it is tax cap compliant, as, as we always strive to be. Um, there are no new additions to staff, but yet we are continuing to improve in so many ways, as you've heard about from uh, Trisha and Aaron and Rob and Susan and Caitlin and everyone that's come and talked um, over the last couple of months. So without further ado, I'll pass it to Gabby for a brief review of the, the budget itself, a, a brief final review, and, um, and then we'll move to the hearing uh, of the public. Thank you. So this marks our official budget hearing for the 23-24 um, superintendent's budget. Um, just to remind everybody, the vote will be in two weeks from today on May 16th. Um, we are looking at a 4.4 budget to budget increase from this current year. Again, this is a tax cap compliant budget. When we look at the overall expenditures, um, we, um, as typical, we see 77.63% of the budget dedicated to our salaries and benefits followed by um, all of our instructional areas and then the back office support, um, which includes facilities and debt service. 
Notable expenses, um, proudly that we're supporting, increases to salaries of 1.1 million, benefits of over 2 million, and an increase in facilities of 870,000, roughly, um, as we all have experienced, even in our personal lives, just the inflation and added costs around supplies, utilities, and everything else that goes with running a business or a household. Our revenue sources, um, as you can see here, predominantly, and we're so very grateful that property taxes support a majority of our budget, um, including um, other areas of county sales tax, utility tax, and our state aid, which is um, projected to be coming in at 3.2 million for the following year. And it, it does sound like the state finally uh, finalized the budget today, but. Um, there were there were no changes coming with that would impact us um, with the state budget. Um, the you know there were a couple of changes in education funding, but they were things like there was a requirement for certain school districts to have set aside a, a certain amount of their state funding for um, a certain kind of tutoring program. Um, we did not meet the criteria to receive any of that funding, so it's not something we had to deal with, but that was stricken so that, that they don't have that restriction. They still get that funding, but, but that's essentially the, it's, it's the same state funding that we had when the governor proposed the budget a few months ago. And we anticipate to use fund balance in the amount of $2.7 million um, to help support the budget. In terms of the impact on the tax levy, we're looking at a 3.19% increase. Again, this is a tax cap compliant budget. Um, we anticipate the tax levy to be 92.64 million. Um, taxable assessments at 135.9 million. This is a number that we continue to update up until the moment that I come to the board with the tax warrant. But as it stands right now, we anticipate the estimated tax rate per thousand to be $681.40. Finally, if there are any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to read, reach out to the Board of Ed, Eric, myself, or feedback at riseschools.org at any time. And again, just to remind everyone, this time next Tuesday, I'll be biting my nails. Two Tuesdays. Oh, this time, thank you, in two weeks. You might be biting your nails next <laughs> Tuesday, but. You won't be with us, too. Right. <laughs> Knowing the two of us and that we bite our nails, <laughs> I can pretty much assure we'll be doing that. Yeah. I hope it will. So, and then, next obviously, Tuesday. with the budget vote is the trustee election um, with uh, two candidates for two seats. Oh, she wrote. All right, great, thank you. Uh, at this time, we will see if there are people from the public who would like to speak about the budget. We remind you that uh, it's three minutes for each speaker and to please state your name, address, and if you are representing an organization, please come to the microphone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Claudine Hanley and I live at 61 Glendale Road. I've been a member of the Rye community since 2013 and I'm currently one of the co-presidents to raise Rye's all-inclusive special education parent group. First, I just want to mention that the budget is tax cap compliant and fiscally responsible. But I'm here tonight to support the proposed uh, budget for the 2023-24 academic year. This year's budget is focused on maintaining and strengthening the current programs and allow for the continued support and growth of our students, faculty, and staff. The Rye City School District has committed to continuing the work around integrated co-teaching by improving the model across all five schools, continuing the work in literacy and the partnership we have with the Haskins Institute, and to continue the work around assessments and progress monitoring through our universal screener, NWEA. It's because of all these great things that my oldest daughter will be returning to the district in September as an eighth grade student, student to the middle school after being at Windward for the last five years. 
I commend Dr. Byrne, administrators and staff, and the Board of Education for continuing to uphold the right commitment and stand behind the words you pledge to our community. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your continued hard work, time, and dedication to our children. Thank you. Thanks so much, Claudine. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Timchak, 61 Osborne Road. I've got four kids in the district, kindergarten through seventh. I am here to voice my support for the budget um, and thank you all for your time and thoughtfulness in creating it. Um, there are four things for me that stand out in the budget which aren't new but I think are exceptional within our district. Um, the first, um, as Claudine mentioned, is integrated co-taught classrooms. I've had four years of experience with children in those classrooms. I know they were created to support um, children that have special needs in the classroom but my kids don't have an IEP and I feel like I've won the lottery every time we get those teacher assignments and my kids are assigned to one of those classes. We moved here from the city when my oldest was was in third grade. He was in a tiny public school classroom with 34 of his best friends and one teacher. So when we come here and we have two teachers in a class with 18 or 20 or maybe 24 kids, um, I really feel like they can support all sorts of learners in those classrooms. And I'm very thankful for the district supporting this co-taught um, model. Another thing that I was really excited to hear about at the middle school was the increased hands-on learning that's going to happen in the science program. Um, I think that's super exciting. Um, the way that we used to learn with textbooks in science when we were young is not the way of the future. Um, and so I'm excited to see that happening in more real-world ways in our middle school. And I hope that that progresses down to the elementary level. I think there's lots of room um, for that model to work for even our youngest, our youngest learners. So I look forward to hopefully you building with the momentum of science. Um, another really great experience that I don't feel like other districts have that my children have benefited from is the ASL program that's here. I think that um, I, was, I wasn't here for the, the early in, inception of it, but I hear that it's grown from the middle school to the high school. My seventh grader is in that class. Um, I think that what he learns in language is interesting. I think what's more interesting is his learning about deaf culture and the empathy it creates for um, people who learn differently than he does. I think being 40 minutes in a classroom of pure silence is very different than anything else he does, and so it's really expanded his mind in all sorts of ways. My um, incoming middle schooler has already signed up for that because she thinks it's awesome, so I'm glad to see that that program is continuing. Um, and then the last thing is the social and emotional supports. Um, I think most of you know that I run the local pride organization, and in that role, spend a lot of time with our community partners at RIA Act and RIA Youth Council thinking about the scaffolding and structure to support students' mental well-being and substance use prevention. Um, and it's well shown in research that having a supportive community really benefits the mental wellness of our kids and school is their community. So to have those social, emotional, learning components being built into the curriculum I think was super important post-pandemic, but that you're continuing to focus on that um, and, and dive in deeper. We've seen the programs that have been brought into the middle school um, and at the high school level and that you're continuing to do that I think is only to the benefit of our students. And that was the end of what I was going to say anyway. So thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Amanda. Hello. That's loud. My name is Rhonda Gilroy. I reside at 12 Dogwood Lane and I've been a resident resident of Rye since 2014. I'm here to express my support for the proposed budget that has been presented for the 23-24 academic year. As a parent and active community member, I've been impressed with the district's fiscal responsibility and commitment to excellence in our schools. I've held various volunteer positions for the PTO when my sons attended Osborne School. I served as co-treasurer, philanthropy chair, and eventually co-president. I've witnessed firsthand the attention and dedication given to meet the needs of every student, including but not limited to learning style, social and emotional needs, and extracurricular interests. Fry City School District administration is consistently focused on creating a safe and nurturing learning environment that fosters growth and success for students. I currently serve in the role of president for the Rye Fund for Education. 
In this role, I continue to witness the district's priority to provide the best educational experience possible to each and every student. The Rye Fund for Education is a nonprofit organization with a mission to fundraise in order to raise financial support for initiatives outside of what the budget can provide. We aim to close this gap by underwriting grants for projects focused on arts, academics, and athletics. If we didn't have the prudent guidance and direction of the current administration, including the Board of Ed, that gap would be much wider. This team does an outstanding job of being fiscally responsible and proactive. I'm confident they have put forth a fiscally responsible budget that puts our students first. Given these factors, I wholeheartedly support the proposed budget and urge you to. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rhonda. Hello, my name is Daniela Redondo Quijo. I live at 5 Osborne Road in Rye. I have been a resident of Rye since 2017, and I'm currently the co-president of the Rye Middle School Parents Organization. I have two children, one in sixth grade, and another one is a freshman in Rye High School. Um, on behalf of parent and parent-teachers organizations here in the Rye City School District, I'm speaking tonight in support of the recommended budget proposal for the 2023-2024 academic year. We are all in agreement that the budget proposed for the academic year is fiscally responsible and within the tax cap limits. The budget presented to us has been thoughtfully designed and is conservative to the challenges of inflation currently faced by the taxpayers. Within this fiscally responsible limit, the district is once again striving for excellence while reflecting our students' needs by providing academic support and mental health support as well. I'm happy to say that throughout the last years, I have seen firsthand the results of these efforts. Our district is fortunate to have strong leadership, a group of thoughtful school administrators, and excellent and caring teachers who go above and beyond to serve our district. We are extremely proud of the Rye City School District. Um, this budget will ensure that our teachers receive ongoing professional development as well as the continued support to provide them with the tools required to ensure our students receive the highest level of education. The Osborne PTO uh, couldn't be here and also specifically wanted to add some things to this uh, message. They mentioned that there will be a direct positive educational impact from this budget on our and our elementary students. We will see the following updates to the elementary literacy curriculum, increased phonic, inst phonic instruction, new work studies for grades three to fifth, and hand handwriting for grades K to two. Lastly, I want to note that the school district is focused in areas of instructional improvement while maintaining class sizes. The district is not making additions, being mindful of the challenging times for our community. While keeping these class sizes, this district continues to be a visionary in academic excellence as it continues to grow challenging educational pathways, which I have to say my high school student has enjoyed, and I'm thrilled that there is the engineering and computer science pathway. Um, it's very, very exciting. Um, I'm thoroughly, you know, very supportive of that, um, which without a doubt will prepare our students for the future. I think that's very important. You know, we just came from COVID, but we all have to think about how to prepare our students for the future. Seeing firsthand the commitment and work by leadership, administrators, and faculty, we urge voters to support this bu budget on May 16th. And I thank you on behalf of all the POs for your contribution, for your time, and for your care on being part of our district. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Hello, uh, Stephen Talk for Boulder Road. Been a resident since 2007. Failed Board of Education candidate in 2009. <laughs> so, um, first of all, 
Um, thank you for your hard work to thank this job. When it goes well, no one says thank you. When it doesn't go well, everyone calls your house. So thank you very much. Um, I'm here in support of the Academy. Um, thank you for the budget. And I just want you to know how important the Academy is to some of the students at school. Um, my daughter, I have two children went through Rye High School. One is a type A extrovert, graduated four years ago, ended up graduating college early, and is going to work in New York City. My other child, who attended Rye High School graduating this year, um, <laughs> is the exact opposite. Not type A, introvert. And she wrote her college essay about the academy. And she did very well when it came to getting into colleges. And her entire essay was about the academy. And I just want to share two quotes with you, kind of with her permission, um, from this essay. <laughs> Uh, this is the first one. Where learning had once felt rigid and chore-like, it abruptly transformed into a fulfilling outlet for my curiosity and creativity. And the second quote, my learning wasn't limited to an academic arena. Whenever I entered those classroom doors, my teachers and classmates taught me, about, taught me something about myself. They taught me to be confident in my beliefs and encouraged me to share my opinions even when I was doubtful that anyone would agree with them. This is a girl who did not speak in class. In fact, even during COVID, was hopeful she could unclick mute, say two words, and click mute. <laughs> she did not participate in middle school. She did not participate during COVID. Speaking in public terrified her. And the academy has transformed her. She has made lifelong friends, and she's developed a lifelong love of learning. She now wakes up every morning at 5.30 in the morning she reads in her room till 7 o'clock in the morning. From 7 to 7.30, she eats her breakfast, preferably without me bothering her, and continues to read. This is a girl who turned the corner because of the academy. And she's very happy going where she's going to school. Pleased to tell you she's going to UVM and received an academic scholarship. So um, I didn't go in detail into the, into the budget. I don't know if this meeting is supposed to be about what programs to keep or not keep. I just want you to know that the academy matters. It matters to those kids who don't want to speak up. It matters to those kids who are introverts. This school is great for type A extroverts. It's great for kid children who need help. Um, and now you have a systematic way of helping those kids who are introverts, who don't want to participate, who want to find what makes sense for them in learning and in education. So please continue to support the academy. Please uh, continue to do the great work you're doing. Please continue to be able to afford the academy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Stephen. Steve, you can never say this is a thankless job again. I'm, 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 I'm tearing up. It's un unbelievable um, to hear that kind of story. I love it so much. Thank you for coming out. Hello, I'm Laura Labriola, uh, 34 Dearborn. I've lived in Rye for 29 years. Have two out of Rye, high, Rye schools and one a freshman. I'm also a proud mom of one of those unified basketball players from the other day. <laughs> yeah. um, I just, um, a lot of you know me in my capacity as Ray's in the, the high school representative and my advocacy for special education, but one of the things that I usually try to do, I do have a financial background, so without money, we can't have programming. So I do usually try to follow um, what's going on with the budget, and I admit um, I've been a little lax, haven't been to too many meetings this year, but luckily they're all warehoused um, on YouTube, so I was able <laughs> to go back, and I watched every single one of the Board of Ed videos on the, um, and all the budget presentations. Um, also did attend the Saturday Morning Budget Cafe, um, which uh, one thing that I did notice going back and looking at the YouTube videos and being at the Budget Cafe was that there was pretty much nobody there. Um, which I think for you guys on the board and administrators, this is, could be construed as a good thing, right? No one's there, no one's complaining. But um, I don't know what it is, if it's COVID fatigue or something like that, but um, I just hope that parents will also understand that participation in the budget is necessary. Because if we don't pass the budget, um, 
you know, we could some bad things can come of that. So, um, firstly, like everyone here before me has said, it's a tax cap compliant budget. It's fiscally responsible, and it's one that um, continues to focus on important programming that supports all of our students' needs. Um, and if you feel so inclined, if you want to know more about the budget, you can all go back and watch the YouTube videos like I did, because not only are they very informative, but they're actually pretty funny. I think if our Board of Ed president someday decides she wants to um, retire, there might be another career path for you, Jane. Um, my personal favorite is Dr. No Fun. <laughs> But seriously, quite clear. <laughs> <laughs> while the budget is a fiscally responsible budget, um, I wanted to make sure parents understand that if we don't pass the budget, what can happen is we actually get zero dollar increase. And you know, that with rising costs of mandated expenses, as Gabby mentioned, you know, all utility supplies, everything's going up, even teachers' benefits have gone up eight percent if we don't get a vote yes for our budget. This means that there'll be a $2.8 million cut from our current budget. We'll get a zero increase, and that also means that we're gonna have to have massive cuts in programming and staff. And as you've heard all these other parents say, we, we've just begun to, um, there's so many robust programs going on, and we're just at the beginning of you know, starting so many wonderful things that I'd really hate to see us take a step backwards and, um, have those programs cut from our budget. So my, um, I'm here tonight to implore parents, get out and vote, get your child who's 18 or over that absentee ballot. <laughs> and um, also, real quick, um, there's, there is two open seats for the Board of Ed. I know one is uncontested. Uh, they're both uncontested. And we have um, the wonderful Tom Stein, who's been great so far. We have a, a newcomer, Sean Kepler, who, um, you guys may not know her, but you hear from her every week because she uh, produces the middle school and the high school newsletter. So all the more reason to get out and vote. Thanks. Thank you, Laura. Hello. My name is Parag Sheth. Um, I live at 18 Holly Lane. And so I've been in, uh, in Rye for about 15 years now and have had uh, one student already uh, two years graduated from Rye High School and I've got two juniors that are in the, in the school as well. And um, I think Steve and I might be brothers from different mothers because <laughs> I was going to say, I came here to support the academy as well and I was going to talk about the same things. It was kind of weird about how my kids are all very different and they all got great support here. So I feel like I don't think I could have done it more eloquently and I, I have no quotes to steal from my kids. So I'm kind of like <laughs> feeling a little lost up here. Um, but I will say one thing about the academy program because I, um, when my daughter got into the academy program and they had that intro to the academy, they take you up there and they walk you around the academy program and they look at the learning, they show you the learning environment and how the tables are set up and everything. And I walked around there and it's just like, oh, a lot of parents were like, oh, very cool, very cool. I was like, oh, I know this space. I've been in this space before. And the reason I know this space before um, or not the exact space, but the, the feeling of the space before is because I also teach at the medical school at Mount Sinai. And the medical school at Mount Sinai has rooms that are set up that look very much like the academy program here because that's how learning is now done at the medical school at Mount Sinai, which is becoming sort of the standard where we have, where everything is sort of a, a group-based learning setting, project-based learning is really the way of the future. And if you are doing college tours the way I am because I've got two juniors, you also find out when you go to all those college visits that that is how many classrooms in many prestigious colleges are set up and I'm fortunate because of the support of Rye to have a daughter that's had a chance to look at some of the best schools in the country and um, every single one of them has programs that are set up very much in the model of the academy. Well, in the model of the academy, I don't think the academy, they don't think they looked at us first, but um, it think it, I think it reflects how forward thinking the Rye high school has been and uh, the department of edu and in general the education departments here. My older son was the first um, to the academy first um, and he is as I was going to say a very different type kid. 
Um, but he was very into computer sciences. There were two AP computer science classes that are available at Rye. There are, are not a lot of um, high schools around that will offer as much tech support as he wanted um, as he could have found at Rye High School. So we're very grateful for that. And uh, he's on his way to launching himself into a very good tech career. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is actually, uh, because this is about supporting the budget, um, as my, my son asked me, uh, I was like, well, you know, we, you're, we're almost out of here. Like, why would you support budget increases? Um, and this is a question that came up a few years ago on the golf course here in Rye when I was playing with a father who's, uh, who is now, his kids were well graduated. And it was like, yeah, they're, you know, they want to increase the budget again. I'm getting tired of the budget increases. And... Um, my reflection to him at that point is the same one I, I'll, I'll share with you now. Um, and again, going back to my job as a physician, I have I work with a, a young doctor who's just starting, who just joined our practice. Her husband's a, a lung transplant surgeon, and they're looking for um, a, they're living in the city and they're looking to move up um, into Westchester. And the thing that they are looking for is the same thing that I was looking for: great schools. And so they're considering Rye and. One of the main attractions that, as many of you may remember, because I know many people, many from our community have come from the city, one of the major things you're looking for is a great school system, a well-funded uh, well school system that has a lot of diversity, has a lot of uh, AP courses, has a lot of great teaching, and has a great reputation. And if you want to be selfish about the budget, you're going to want to move, your, you're going to want to support a budget because if you are trying to sell your house at the best possible price. You want the most demand coming to your property, to your community, and the most demand is going to be driven by the quality of the schools. That's what my colleague wanted as her number one priority. So she's looking at a bunch of towns that have great schools, and we need to continue to support great schools because it's great for our kids. It's also great for our own budgets in the end. Because when I sell my house. It's going to be worth much more if my school district is a great school district, district the way this one is. So I support the budget. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cora. I'll do my teacher waiting. Make sure there are no other people from the audience who would like to speak. Okay, seeing none, I will turn it over to any board members who have any comments or things that they'd like to talk about related to the budget. Can I ask a question related to some numbers on section six, six of the budget, the budget report, I guess? I think it's the budget report. The, the other doc. More detailed one? Yeah. No, no, the other, the other doc that was in the agenda. Oh, the book, okay. Yeah, it says budget report at the top of this. Um, did you want to pull it? It's kind of a detailed question if you want to. I don't. Oh, you don't have it? Okay. Well, actually, you No, no, no. I think I'm. Oh, it's the same document, actually. It just looks different in the presentation. But it is the same budget summary. Oh, okay, great. Oh. It might, I might not be on the right one. Wait, what, what slide are you talking about? I'm blocking this. Section six. Section six. Tax rate. Oh, is that in the Page 16 of the okay. book. Oh. Oh. Page 15. Okay. Page 15. Yeah. Page 15. Yeah, I'm not seeing page numbers of mine, sorry. Okay. Um, the line that's sort of the final estimated taxable assessed value. I mean, I noticed that that doesn't go up much until this last year. Is that sort of reflective of inflation or you would, okay. Um, because, you know, the one, one thing I note in this is, and obviously we've talked about inflation, but it seems that this is a fairly specific reflection of it because if you also look at the bottom, the bottom line shows the estimated tax rate increase percent. Um, so it's the percentage of how much our taxes have gone up relative to what the assessed value is, um, which if you look at the prior years, 
there's a relatively flat line correlation. It's not exact, but there's the only one that has a greater than 1% gap was last year. We know that last year had some debt service increase that went into it, so that explains why that is a little like a 1.4 jump as opposed to the others that are relatively straight here. This year we have a 3.2 jump net, but a negative 0.76% um, in terms of it relative to the excess, excess rate, which, I mean, you tell me, but I guess my, my conclusion of this is that in balancing this relative to inflation, we've actually had a, had a budget, you can make the argument, that's, 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 that's come down, not up, if you factor out for inflation. Is that, do you think that's roughly fair? <laughs> All right, that was the only point I was trying to make. Um, I just really appreciate the people who came to speak tonight. I think we've spent so much time thinking about the numbers getting so into the numbers. There was so much thoughtful, intentional presentation, so much work. Uh, it's really amazing to hear sort of what has what is coming from the community and you know clearly there's an appreciation from the community for the fiscal responsibility um, and we've talked about how you know balancing this amazing intentional programming um, in the inflationary environment that we're in and so I just very grateful to see that the work that is done by the administrators that the community is able to see that so clearly because I thought the comments were just so um, aligned in so many ways and I also it triggered for me such a gratefulness for the support our community offers to the district because as we know this year we are supporting you know all the current programming and we are making some changes in improving curriculum um, but there's not um, you know a huge amount of new pizzazz um, because of, of the funding but the comments on the academy and all that the adaptive learning spaces you know over the past few months Jane has called out these wonderful gifts we're getting from the PTOs to increase that adaptive learning obviously the right fund for education continues to come in so we as a district at the board table we are balancing that fiscal responsibility and the administration works so hard to give us a budget that we can accept and, and create that balance and then as a community we're so lucky to have such broad-based support so I just am feeling grateful for the comments you know reflecting on the process that got us to tonight um, and how much thought has gone into it and you know grateful that the community appreciates that too based on the comments uh, education requires investment we got we got to invest in our schools uh, you said it so well um, people invest in communities that invest in their education um, and, the, and the schools. So it's it's a uh, it's the continuation of that. And hearing the stories about the, the you know things that are resonating, what we've been able to accomplish, what this administration has been able to accomplish through the pandemic uh, and and some challenging economic times is is fantastic. Um, so I I love the fact that the uh, the budget continues to support the programs that we've been talking about and um, and and see all this wonderful stuff grow. Thank you. Yeah, I just had one question, and I, I can't remember if we've spoken about it before, but in the new sort of high interest rate environment that we're in, is there a way to take advantage of that relative to fund balances and making sure that our money is in higher interest rate accounts or short-term treasuries? Yes, yeah, so Kathy is masterful at that and making sure that we are having our money work for us the best possible way that we can, including being able to use the funding that we have allocated that we've borrowed but have not yet utilized fully for the capital bond where we make sure that we have it located in areas that are, you know, providing us as much interest as possible. Great. So I, I think I probably would just echo what um, Kelsey and Chris have said. And one of the things that I loved hearing was the student impact. Um, I think what's, what's fantastic is that we've talked a lot about these program changes um, that we've reached over the last several years that maybe had were associated with budgets where there was new. Um, and 
we're at a we're at a place where we're able to continue to grow those, but um, oftentimes what what is harder to capture is how that's materializing in the classroom and to hear and we've heard this over the course of the year and seen it over the course of the year in different presentations including our last meeting where we had the critical thinking expo um, but to have parents come and talk about how um, the work through the academy has just given their kids a whole new um, perspective on learning and when, people, when the kids come from the academy they do that they say the same thing. Um, so I just, I, and to hear students coming back to the district because they, um, they know that they're gonna be able to get the supports that they need um, is just, it's, it's amazing. So all of it is, is, is for that purpose, for the students to get all of the, the supports they need and to develop into lifelong learners. Um, and so, you know, I have more to do, obviously, every year. And the <laughs> point is just to keep consistent and keep going in this, in this direction and reflect and, and do better all the time. So thank you to the administration, um, all of the faculty, all of the building administrators, um, you know, because without all of them, none of this happens. So thank you. So six years ago, I would never say this, um, I am thrilled that we are in a place as a district where we don't need new programs, where we don't need new fancy amazing stuff because we are a district of one. We are not five different schools and five different silos. There is not something that's happening at Osborne in the fifth grade class that's not happening in the fifth grade class at Milton. This is a budget that is representative of a lot of growth and hard work and uh, purpose. And it is tough to get to this place. And it is because of the hard work of the administration and of the teachers and of our board and of our kids who have um, just doubled down and said, we're going to do the best that we can do. And there, is, there are mountains to move still, right? But this budget is reflective of a, of, of a district that has one commitment and one purpose and is moving all kids forward. And, you know, from the simple things like having a boys volleyball team next fall that grew out of a community lunch that was three years ago and then COVID came and oh, what, we're still going to do community lunch? How are you going to do that? It's just crazy. Now we have a boys basketball team because of that. And it's because of teachers and administrators listening to kids. Every kid in K-2, to I can't tell you kindergarten to second grade parents how jealous I am that your children will know how to have a signature by the time they're in eighth and sixth grade. And you say to them, sign your passport, and they look at you and go, huh? So <laughs> it's amazing. But again, it's the small things. I, two things that if I didn't say, people wouldn't think it was me. We are now a district that uses data. <laughs> we talk about data and this budget supports data decision making. It supports students learning based and driven where our teachers and our administrators are talking about data. And that's, and I've said this before, that is how we are going to move high performing students in the margins. It's through looking at think, the, the details of the NWEA to say, where are we? How can we help move these kids forward? It's a phonics program that is going to meet the needs of all of our learners. And we are now going to be a district that is going to have a unified understanding and vision of what social and emotional learning is. I don't know if it gets better than that. And I look forward to seeing how it gets better, because I know it will. It, 
it can't not get better. And it's through this budget, and it's through the commitment, and I just, it's pretty amazing to be here six years later. And so I think everybody, and I don't think it could be on a better day than Teacher Appreciation Day, to say <laughs> thank you to our teachers for making this the kind of budget that is possible in our schools. And thank you to the administration for making this kind of budget possible. I think that was uh, very well said. And I uh, just want to add one more thing as it was referenced earlier I am up for for re-election this year which means I get the wonderful opportunity to answer questions by the Rye press and various things along those lines and you know for the most part just answer the questions straight but one of those questions was along the lines of well you know list the three or four best opportunities for cost savings in the next that you see for the next three to five years um, and so I audibled my answer to that and I think it's relevant to the conversation you were just having because I don't think it's the right what I've learned in three years on the board is that's not the right way to look at it. To savings that are going to occur or you know, opportunities for responsible budgeting that are going to occur in the next three to five years are based on decisions that were made three to five years ago. And the decisions that we make now over the next few years will then affect what's going to happen several years out. Not necessarily, I mean, obviously some things affect year to year, but really you're not going to make much change in the next three years based on what we do in the next six months, the next year or so. It's based on the decisions that have gone before. And I think, you know, in line with what Jane was just saying, what I see based on, um, you know, you've got sort of six years of observation, I've got three years of observation, but the opportunity in this financial environment to have a budget that only goes up by what it does, and as Gabrielle and I discussed earlier, um, actually relative to inflation is going the opposite direction is reflective of that. Um, and, and I think that that is good planning over the last three to six years. Yeah, I think there's some efficiencies in there that, that are hard to pull out. Um, and, and having looked at this for over a decade now, we talk about, I'll use special education as a great example. We talk about investing in bringing our kids, more and more of our kids back into this school building um, and having them learn amongst their peers as a massive educational benefit, and it is. It's good for everybody to, to, to have that diversity of learning. And we heard about it tonight, people seeing kids, how they learn differently. It's also really good fiscal management because there's nothing more expensive than having kids go out. So you get a win, 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 and that doesn't show up in a cost savings. You don't you don't think about it that way. So I think you're right. It's 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 not asking the right question. It's what are the right investments? Are you investing in kids and what they need um, and what they need in the future? How are they going to be learning? They're going to be learning in that academy style. So invest in that. That'll pay off. In that's an investment that'll pay off. You'd never look at it and say it's a cost saving, but it's absolutely the right way to be spending money. Um, and I think that's the right lens to be thinking about it. We talk about it all the time with the commitment. Um, this is what we want to provide our kids. This is what we commit to doing them. This process, the budget process, is how we invest in doing that. Um, so that's the right, the right way to ask that question and answer that, that question. I think that's why I've thought about it. And it becomes more and more uh, clear to me every year I do this. All right, well, thank you all. And we will move on now for the hearing of the public on non-agenda items. We welcome and encourage our community members to address the board at this time. Please come to the podium, state your name and address, and if you are representing an organization. To ensure everyone has, uh, has the opportunity to speak, please limit your remarks to three minutes. The board is here to listen. The, the public comment period is not designed to be a discussion. So please understand that we may not respond to your comments or questions at this time. We take your comments seriously and may need more time to process and research an issue. We will ensure questions will be addressed by the appropriate staff member or possibly answered at a future board meeting. We will not entertain comments re regarding individual students or district personnel as these are protected under state and federal privacy laws. Please know we take personnel concerns very seriously. On these matters, we would ask you to follow the appropriate administrative channels. As a reminder, the community may always submit written comments at any time to the board by sending those to rcsdboard at ryschools.org. Anyone from the community who would like to speak on some non-agenda items, please come forward.
Seeing none, we will move forward to the consent agenda. Can I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Sorry, Chris Rapetto seconded by Tom Stein. <laughs> My name. I, I did. I actually, I, yeah, you're, you're I legitimately you're forgot. I was like, oh my gosh. Just, just, maybe it's because I'm worried about what's coming. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Sorry. So let's take a little, a little bird walk through the consent agenda, shall we? Consent agenda que uh, general. Okay. Consent agenda fiscal. Chris Rapetto, would you like to provide sure. some it, commentary for us, please, on our internal audit? Is it, is it in fiscal? So it, in, the, it is. Uh, yes. in the consent agenda. <laughs> and you wonder why I forget your name. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the results of the internal audit. Uh, you'll find our today's consent agenda. Um, Every year, the internal auditors um, go through a risk rating and a risk assessment. The areas we take a look at are extra, extra classroom activities, payroll, food service, purchasing and payables, human resources, facilities and capital projects, revenue accounting and reporting, information technology, employee benefits, special education, and transportation. Um, every area gets a risk score. It's an interesting document. You should read it. Um, people f are often concerned that they see things ranked as medium risks. And the fact of the matter is that's in most cases because these are fairly large areas that have lots of expenditures um, and are complicated, you're never gonna get a low risk rating. The thing to look in this, see in this report is the stuff that's not there. What there are not, what do not exist are lots of findings for recommendations for improvement. It's one of the cleanest reports I've read in 11 years of doing this. Um, and and it's, it's remarkable. Uh, I say it every year. The, uh, the findings become fewer and fewer, um, and, and the answers for what we're going to do to remediate are, are the same, which are if we think they're really good ideas, we'll do them, and there's a lot of good reasons why we, don't, why we do things the way we do now um, and, and don't change them. The second document in here is, is a deep dive into employee benefits um, where, they, where the internal auditors um, get out the, uh, the fine tooth combs and microscopes and dig into our health benefits. They look at uh, the health insurance, the health insurance waiver buyout, life insurance and the welfare fund. Um, I'm gonna read the last thing they wrote and it says, our tests demonstrated extremely accurate results, noting no exceptions. They dug into hundreds of records, individual levels and found nothing. <laughs> I think a, a comment was made that they never found that. Yeah, they, they said this is out of the ordinary, quote unquote. <laughs> like typically there's going to be a clerical, you know, error or somebody moved, you know, made some sort of move that wasn't processed accurately. Um, they were very positive um, uh, at the end of the audit and they said they've done dozens of audits into benefits over their lifetime and they had never seen this before, the no exception. So there was um, a lot of positive feedback for the administrative team from the internal auditors at the meeting. Yeah, that's, um, that's remarkable work, Abby and crew. That's amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. You make, you make well, this job so, so easy. And I have to give a shout out to my team. We are finally in a place where we have consistency. We have strong players. I couldn't do it without them. Go Bertha Zavallis because she is our employee benefits guru. Everybody knows her. She does it well. <laughs> and we are very lucky. I am. My team is great. And can you imagine what this is going to look like when we actually have a payroll? <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> and, and I just want to point out, so this is a the first full year of our new internal auditors, or the second? The so first. our internal have been with us for a bit. You're okay. talking about the external? Okay. This would be our second year with our new external, external. auditors. Okay. Yep. So I was thinking that, th that we had a switch also in that. So. I think Never they said mind. the fourth year. Fourth, fourth year, okay. yes. With right. the internal. But I think there were certain areas where they had never done a deep dive that they noted within Correct. the um, I mean, auditing reports. And even so for them, it was, it was you know, a brand new set of eyes in a certain yes. area. And I mean, we've come light years because one of the, I've been with the district 12 years now. Um, <laughs> and one of the first places we went when I got here 12 years ago was employee benefits. I cannot begin to tell you night and day from where we were using an Excel spreadsheet with 
thousands of lines of employee names and going through that every year compared to, yes, I see, yes, exactly. But implementing, and it sounds crazy, but the benefits module and win cap and Bertha doing a reconciliation right. of each and every one of these bills every month is just, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and that is how we got to clean records. So we are extremely lucky. Well, and this is another example of investment and sort of how it can save money yep. over the long term Absolutely. and in creating the budget to support positive investment for process, for the systems, for the team, and it's really a risk, mitigating future risk. It's very important. True. Yep. And you are lucky with your team, and we as a community are lucky to have you and your team. And it sounds like anybody who's looking for a payroll clerk <laughs> position, it's a great opportunity to come to an amazing team. Just putting it out there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for your Good update. Old. That will be now in lieu of having to share in the board update when we go to the communications to and from the board. I won't talk about it twice. No, you don't have to. Thank you. You got, you got your work Appreciate done. That. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, consent agenda professional. Consent agenda classified. And consent agenda special education. Okay, seeing no questions, if we can have a vote to accept the consent agenda. All those in favor? That would be 7 0. Okay, so this evening in our consent agenda. We uh, have approval of multiple professional learning opportunities for our teachers. And uh, we, as a learning institution, know that it is critical that we promote and foster the learning of our teachers, uh, which only goes to benefit the learning of our students. So we are happy to do that. Uh, they, we also have officially and formally adopted the school district budget, so please make sure to come vote on May 16th, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the Rye Middle School Gymnasium. Uh, we accepted our internal audit, which Mr. Repetto spoke about. We also are happy to accept a $5,000 donation from Roseanne Stewart and Tyler Dixon to support the Spring for Rye Tree Initiative, and we also are accepting accepting $10,000 from the Rye High School PTO also for the Spring for Rye Tree Initiative. So we thank uh, the high school PTO and we thank our families as well. This is, as we saw, uh, if you didn't have an opportunity to see their presentation, they did come and speak at our last board meeting two board meetings ago, anybody remember? I think it was two. So please, uh, you know, it's, it's a great presentation and it's a great opportunity to see our kids at work and um, the things that they are excited and passionate about. We also um, accepted or talked about uh, the girls ice hockey team merger for 23-24, as you all know. I find it really exciting that we as a district are finding ways to support our students in all of their interests and having a merger allows our girls who play ice hockey to have an opportunity to play uh, for the school district, so it's great. So all of that being said, we will now move on to presentation and discussion number two, policies. 5550, student privacy. Mrs. Yep. Boyle. So this is um, student privacy, uh, which we did a first review of during our last meeting. Um, and just as I noted previously, um, there's a ton of red and green uh, throughout the document, most of which is just reorganization uh, of the information uh, within the, the uh, policy. And um, based on our discussion last time, the ch one change that was not included has been made, which is a strike under the very last section called f physical examinations, where we removed the language around invasive physical examinations. It had not been removed. We had a little technical glitch last meeting. Um, but I did not get any other additional questions or concerns from our last meeting, so if there are no additional ones now, we will bring this forward to be adopted with the changes. All right, fantastic, thank you so much. 
And now moving on to communications to and from the board. Uh, as we see, the audit committee met and we've already gotten our update for that. Upcoming, we've got a lot happening. Our health and safety committee is gonna meet on Thursday. The professional learning committee will meet the following week. Uh, then the policy committee meets again. And then the technology committee meets. So those two board members who are members of the technology committee, make sure to note your calendars, please. All right, any other communications to and from the board? No? Okay, seeing none, I will just remind everyone, third time's a charm, on May 16th, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., you can come vote for the budget and trustees uh, in the Rye Middle School Gymnasium. We look forward to seeing all of our community members there. Voting is important, and we encourage all community members to participate in this civic engagement. So with that, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Chris Rapetto, seconded by Jen Boyle. All those in favor? Seven nothing. Have a good evening.